To write the formula for compounds with polyatomic ions, we'll use the periodic table and a list of common polyatomic ions. We'll follow some simple rules here to guide us. So let's try one. We'll write the formula for potassium nitrate. For potassium nitrate, we know potassium is a metal, and then nitrate is a group of nonmetals, a polyatomic ion. And we know that because it ends in A-T-E. We go to the periodic table, and for potassium, the symbol is K. We can also look at the charge. It's in group one, so its charge is plus one. For the nitrate, we're not gonna find that on the periodic table. We need to go to a common ion table and look that up. We go to our common ion table, and we can see that nitrate is NO3 minus. So we write NO3 minus, and now we just need to balance the charges. Potassium has a plus one charge, and then the nitrate, it has a minus, minus one charge. Because the plus one and the minus one cancel out, that leaves us with KNO3 as the formula for potassium nitrate. So pause and give this one a try, sodium phosphate. There's a link to the common ion table in the description of this video. For sodium phosphate, we have a metal and then our group of nonmetals. We know that it has ATE here. So we go to the periodic table, we look up sodium, we know that's Na, and it has a plus one charge. We look up the phosphate on the common ion table, and phosphate turns out to be PO4 3 minus. The 3 minus that applies to this whole PO4, this thing stays together. We can think of it as one thing. So we have our 3 minus here, but a plus one here, they're not balanced. So to cancel out the minus three, we'll need a plus three. We can do that by changing the subscript. We'll put a three here. That means we have three sodium atoms, three times plus one, that's plus three, and that'll cancel out the minus three, making Na3PO4 the formula for sodium phosphate. It's important to understand that when we have a compound with a polyatomic ion, like sodium phosphate here, that it's made up of those three sodium ions and then one phosphate ion. So the sodiums, we see they have a plus charge, and then the phosphate ion, that has that minus three. Each of those oxygens with a single bond has a minus charge on it. The sodiums are attracted to the minus, and you see a structure like this here. If we put this in water, the sodiums, they dissolve, they would move away, and we'd be left with that PO4-3 minus, that phosphate ion. The point is, the phosphate ion can be considered one thing. It's not going to break apart very easily. Let's try to do one that's a little different, calcium phosphite. So pause and try to write the formula for calcium phosphite. For calcium phosphite, we have our metal, that's the calcium, and then the phosphite, that's our polyatomic ion, and we know that it ends in I-T-E. So when you see I-T-E, you're thinking polyatomic ion. We go to the periodic table, calcium is Ca, and it has a plus two charge. The phosphite, we look it up on the common ion table, that's PO3, three minus. Since we have an ionic compound, we need to balance the charges, but with the plus two and then the three minus here, that's a little bit challenging to kind of conceptually do. So we have a little trick called the crisscross method. We take the three here on the phosphite and we move that down to the subscript for the calcium. Then we take this two and we move it over here down as a subscript for this phosphite ion. We do need to put parentheses around the phosphite to show that the two applies to this whole thing, not just the oxygen. We get rid of our charges and that's the formula for calcium phosphite. We should check our work though. You remember calcium had a plus two charge and the phosphite, that was a three minus. We have three calcium ions here and each one's plus two. So three times plus two, it's a plus six. And then we have two of these phosphite ions. So two times that minus three, that gives us minus six, plus six, minus six, those cancel out. So this is the correct formula for calcium phosphite. Give this one a try, magnesium phosphate. For magnesium phosphate, we have Mg, and that has a charge of two plus. We look up the phosphate, because we know eight is a polyatomic ion, and that's PO4, three minus. We start with the crisscross method, move the three down here, the two over here, we write our parentheses, 
and clean up these charges. And that gives us the formula for magnesium phosphate. We do need to check our work though. Remember magnesium was a plus two, phosphate was a minus three, three times plus two, that's plus six, two times the minus three, minus six, charges cancel out, net charge is zero. This is the correct formula for magnesium phosphate. We'll clean it up a bit and that's it. Let's try one more. This one's a little bit strange, so don't let it trick you. Pause and write the formula for ammonium carbonate. And I'll give you a hint, ammonium is not on the periodic table. For ammonium carbonate, we have two polyatomic ions. So we look up ammonium on the common ion table and that's NH4 and it has a positive charge. Carbonate we know is on the polyatomic table too because it ends in ATE and it's CO3 two minus. We have this plus plus one charge here and then we have the two minus. We know that we're gonna need two NH4 ions to cancel out the minus two here. So if we put a two here and then we need parentheses, that'll give us two times plus one. So that plus two will cancel out this two. And that makes this the formula for ammonium carbonate. To make your life a lot easier, I recommend at the minimum memorizing these polyatomic ions. That way you can quickly name and not spend a lot of time going back and forth to the list of polyatomic ions. For lots more practice naming and writing formulas, visit Breslin.org. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.